Monday of the twelfth week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the second book of Kings. Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, occupied the whole land and attacked Samaria, which he besieged for three years. In the ninth year of Hoshea, king of Israel, the king of Assyria took Samaria and deported the children of Israel to Assyria, setting them in Hala at the Habor, a river of Gozan, and the cities of the Medes. This came about because the children of Israel sinned against the Lord their God, who had brought them up from the land of Egypt, from under the domination of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and because they venerated other gods. They followed the rights of the nations whom the Lord had cleared out of the way of the children of Israel and the kings of Israel whom they set up. And though the Lord warned Israel and Judah by every prophet and seer, Give up your evil ways, and keep my commandments and statutes, in accordance with the entire law which I enjoined on your fathers, and which I sent you by my servants the prophets, they did not listen, but were as stiff-necked as their fathers who had not believed in the Lord their God. They rejected his statutes, the covenant which he had made with their fathers, and the warnings which he had given them, till in his great anger against Israel the Lord put them away out of his sight. Only the tribe of Judah was left. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Song The response is, Help us with your right hand, O Lord, and answer us. O God, you have rejected us and broken our defenses. You have been angry. Rally us. Help us with your right hand, O Lord, and answer us. You have rocked the country and split it open. Repair the cracks in it, for it is tottering. You have made your people feel hardships. You have given us stupefying wine. Help us with your right hand, O Lord, and answer us. Have not you, O God, rejected us, so that you go not forth, O God, with our armies? Give us aid against the foe, for worthless is the help of men. Help us with your right hand, O Lord, and answer us. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Stop judging that you may not be judged. For as you judge, so will you be judged, and the measure with which you measure will be measured out to you. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, Let me remove that splinter from your eye, while the wooden beam is in your eye? You hypocrite! Remove the wooden beam from your eye first, then you will see clearly to remove the splinter from your brother's eye. The Gospel of the Lord The first reading comes from 2 Kings 17, 5-8, to 13-15a, to and 18. This is the story of the destruction of the northern kingdom of Israel. Remember, after the reign of Solomon, the ten northern tribes had separated from the two southern tribes. The northern tribes called themselves Israel, while the southern tribes called themselves Judah. The northern kingdom, unfortunately, was like a banana republic, where they would have a king who would last for a while, his son would take the throne and be overthrown by a general. There was no stable dynasty, and there was no stable foreign policy, so the kings of the north got themselves in trouble, especially with Assyria. 722 BC, the emperor of Assyria destroys the northern kingdom, exiles all of the nobility, those who were educated, and leaves the poor people on the land, and then brings in a pagan population, 
to interbreed with that native population. That mixture of these two groups becomes the Samaritan people. What happened to the people who were exiled, we really don't know. They seem to disappear into Assyria, Babylon. And it's possible that some of them came back after the return of the Babylonian exiles in 539 BC, but we're not sure. Why did this happen? It was a punishment for the sinfulness of the people of Israel. Remember, Israel was a very divided kingdom in the sense that one village would be pagan, one village would be Jewish. And the Jewish kings often, often practiced syncretism, joining their faith with the faith of the pagans. Remember that with Ahab and Jezebel, where they actually had two capitals, Samaria, capital for the pagans, Jezreel, the capital for the Jewish people. And it was the prophets who had to call the Israelites back to faithfulness, but it was never fully successful. The Gospel is from Matthew 7, 1 to 5, a continuation of the Sermon on the Mount. We're not to judge. It doesn't mean that we can't notice that things that other people are doing are wrong. We shouldn't judge them. Actions, yes, but them, no, because we don't know what capacity they truly have. We don't know what gifts or weaknesses they received at birth, so we don't judge them. The measure with which you measure will be measured back to you. These are all wisdom sayings. If you're generous of spirit, then you'll live in generosity. Don't try to remove the splinter from your brother's eye before you remove the plank from your own. And the first thing we should do when we're tempted to judge others is admit to ourselves that maybe in the eyes of God that which we're doing is more serious than that which they're doing. To look at ourselves and say, how can I convert? And maybe through my conversion, I can invite them to convert. And may God bless us.